uh, I'm the founder and current director of the song sharing nonprofit organization. As an artist, I'm a singer songwriter, I'm a speaker, I'm a poet of sorts, uh, and I'm an author. Art to me is the creation of a space, a sacred space. And in my opinion, art is for the sake of art. So when I write a song and I complete a song, my view of it is to honor the song. Song Sharing is an organization dedicated to making music more accessible, plain and simple. Dedicated to getting musicians to move beyond audience discrimination, to use a pretty harsh term, and practice you know, audience inclusion. While traditional venues are on the decline and there are fewer and fewer places for more and more musicians to play, these community venues, senior homes, hospitals, nursing homes, uh, facilities for the disabled, prisons, these places are on the rise. Our population's aging. There's a huge opportunity for us as musicians and it's not just to go play for free, it's most definitely not to go play out of pity. It is a place to go practice our art and engage the artistic moment. We have to do it, I think, through the nonprofit structure. And we've had some wonderful musicians play. Uh, David Wilcox, who travels all around the country, all around the world. He's a very well-known singer-songwriter from Asheville, North Carolina. And I made contact with his manager beforehand and said, I you know, wonder if David would be interested in going to Westminster Canterbury and playing a show. 45-minute show, I've got some money, and uh, we can pay you. And he did. And so, you know, at three o'clock in the afternoon, he played a show at Westminster Canterbury. And it, it was a blast. He got to try out some, you know, play some new songs that he was gonna play that night. So he got a little warm up set and he had a fantastic time. One of the interesting phenomena that I have run into for the, you know, many years that I've been doing this uh, with musicians is this notion of, you know, I don't have time. I can't. I can't come. I'm. I'm busy. I'm trying to make a living as a musician. You know, the starving artist thing. And then I would say, well, but we've got money. We're a nonprofit organization. You know, I can pay you to come and do this. Oh, you know, I. I couldn't take money to play for those people. Which touches on two things. One is, you know, what is it? What you want to make money? We can pay you money. There's money to be made doing this. What is this? you know, it's discrimination. It's just, to me, it's, it's a big opportunity, <laughs> you know, for us to overcome our own prejudices and to view these people as audiences, not as, you know, pathetic members of society that we need to feel sorry for or something. I, I'm just lost in that. I really am lost in that, in that whole. These are people who cannot get to your venue. They love music. They're the ideal audience. They're attentive, they're appreciative, they're enthusiastic. I mean, what do we want? As an artist, we limit ourselves, I believe, when we begin to judge our audience. And, you know, I encourage artists to live, musicians to live their lyrics. We sing about, let's get along, let's treat each other as equals, let's love, love, love. Okay, let's go.